Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial for all of the extras in the game. Some of these extras can be collected in the same way in 100% as they are in all extras. However, do not take this as a 100% tutorial. This is going to be under the assumption that you would do a Mindy skip and you already have a time in no pause storage and at least know to some extent what you're doing in this game. We've never really had a runner that wanted to run this first, so that is why. So this is still going to be a tutorial. However, it's not going to show you how to do anything outside of collecting the extras. It's going to be assuming that you're doing quite a basic route as well. If you can't do some stuff, I will sometimes immediately show alternative strats. But after I'm done talking about Knucklehead, I'm going to go over some harder alternative strats that you can do. I should say that extras are not like socks in Battle for Bikini Bottom. In BFBB, if a sock is coming towards you, you can just pause and warp away and the sock will always be collected. However, in this game, that is not the case. You can two frame extras, but it doesn't really work that well. Like, I think if an extra is inside of you, but it says it hasn't been collected, then it, you just don't collect it. But if it's coming towards you and it's the final two frames, then you do collect it. However, that is way too risky. Just pause as soon as you see that you have collected the extra. The text box will come up. Okay, with that out of the way, we're gonna go to the first extra. Okay, so for the first extra, I'm gonna show you the easiest possible way to do it first and then I'll show you how I do it. So to make it free, here's what you do. You go down the slide, and then by here, you just hold forward, and then you lose all of your speed, like, immediately. And then you just double jump to here, and then you can just walk over to the extra. It's hard to explain how you do it the way that I do it. It's kind of feel-based, but I can try. You're gonna... More so, you're gonna begin steering, like, up left as you begin hugging against the wall. Like that. And then you want to uh, have good jump spacing and hold A to extend your jumps. It's kind of harder than it looks. You don't want to build up speed for too long. So I'm going to try again. You jump just before uh, the wall. So like this. I didn't jump right at the end of the wall, I jumped just before it. Whichever way, you're gonna wanna die pretty quickly. And there is a thing that you can get called a quick death. Normally when you grab this extra, you get damage and then you have to like jump and spin because that's just like the fastest way to do it normally. But there is a way for the game to not update your position properly and then you just instantly drown in the water and it saves like a second and a half. So you want to be standing like pretty close to the edge and then you want to grab the extra like mid air. So it'll look like this. That was not done perfectly because I still barely touched the edge, but that's because I was so close to the edge that the game didn't update my position. Ideally, that wouldn't happen, but that was still a good demonstration of the trick. And then you just do slide skip as normal, and that's all there is to it for this level. All right, this next extra is pretty easy. What you're gonna do is jump down here, break a door, and then grab the extra, but you're gonna jump just before you reach the edge here because as you can see, you don't descend. So you're gonna drop like this. And then after that, you want to jump while this door is falling, or else it'll, for some reason, flip Patrick around. So if you do it optimally, it'll look like this. And then afterwards, what you want to do is double jump and then press Y to grab onto the ice cube. And that's how you do that. You want to make sure that you stay on the ice cube for long enough to go forward enough so that you don't accidentally ledge grab after the double jump. Because otherwise, if you do it like this, then you might not be able to make it to the other side without a ledge grab. So again, just double jump and then go forward for a sec and then just do another double jump. The other extra in this level can be done later, but again, I'll show that at the end of the video. So if you're the average person, then you're going to do it just after getting the bounce token. So what you're going to do after two framing this token is warp to the second task. Alternatively, if you miss the two frame, then you want to cartwheel all the way back. 
So just as an example, I'm going to miss it here. And then at that point, because you already have cartwheel, it's just faster to do this. Either way, what you're going to do is go this way. I'm going to show you some movement here because it can be hard to not get hit by the peanut guys. So instead of doing this, you want to go around like this, like a curve like I did. That makes it very unlikely for you to actually get hit. Alternatively, you can actually upgrade cartwheel now if you have enough manly points for it. Because if you do, then cartwheel's hitbox will be really big. I actually would recommend upgrading cartwheel anyway, as long as you have enough for it. And the reason why is for the next extra, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So the fastest way to do this is to just walk across here. You can do a double jump to here or a cartwheel double jump and then just double jump here. Reminder that cartwheeling on the ice is not faster. This ice has the same properties as other ice in the game. So what you're supposed to do now is cartwheel all of these boxes. But with unupgraded cartwheel, you can kind of brush against the boxes weirdly. And I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of looks like you're losing a couple frames here and there by doing that. So I think upgraded cartwheel here is faster if you can actually upgrade it here. But yeah, this part is really easy. You just go around like this. And then you grab the extra, and then you just reload to the first token and finish the level like normal. Okay, so this is the only extra in sandwich driving that I'm going to show. And the reason why is because you already know what the other two are. It's literally just the two basic shortcuts. There isn't much to park extra either, but I figured I'd show it anyway. One thing I should say, though, is that if you miss any of the extras in this level, that's not a big deal. And the reason why is because you actually come back here later, just like in no pull storage. So you have a second opportunity to grab those extras. But yeah, for this, you just nitro here, nitro here, and then nitro here. And then just like that, you're done. And again, you already know what the other one is, so I'm just going to go to 3k. This next extra is easy, but it's very easy to forget for some reason. If I were you, I would have a split here that tells you to get this extra, because inevitably you will miss it at some point. So all you do is walk this way. There is an invisible wall about by here. So my visual cue for that is kind of like the edge of this. So have your camera kind of lined up like this. You do get stuck by here, though, so you want to jump just before you get to this bit. So you jump like this. And then when falling down, you want to go left. You fall down, go left, and then you want to spin while falling down to do this as quickly as possible. And then all you have to do after that is do bash gang. So when you load to Bungie, this is where you're standing, and this is where you're actually going to grab the extra. So in case you didn't know, the order that you break these boxes is actually shown in the background. So you break this one first, and this one second, this one third, and this one fourth. Alternatively, you can break them all immediately with upgraded bash, upgraded guitar, or upgraded bowl. So if you really don't want to do this, you could just upgrade guitar and then come back here later. However, that loses a lot of time. If you just want this to be as easy as possible, then you're just going to go in the middle of all of these and just bash them individually. However, with unupgraded bash, it's actually possible to bash two at a time. But you're not going to break them both immediately, so you need to break them in the right order. So how you do that, you're going to stand in between these two red circles, but you're going to be closer to this one. And then when SpongeBob's bashing in midair, when you see that he's about to break the first box, you want to turn him around so that he's facing the second box and then breaks that too. Just like this. So as you saw, I was like this, and then I turned around. And then you just want to do the same thing for these. It can be quite difficult, so I don't blame you if you don't want to do it. If you mess up the order, then you need to kill yourself and try again. After you do this, you don't want to actually collect the extra on the way, because it saves frames to get it after Bungie. So when you're done with Bungie, you're either going to walk back to Bungie if you two-frame the token, or go through the box. But either way, it's going to be in your way. Watch. So it just saves frames to do it like that. The final thing I'm going to show you in this level is the floating block cycle. Of course, this is going to differ heavily for people, but I figured I'd just show it anyway. So there isn't much talking to be done here. It's just demonstrating what it can look like. And I'm still going to show this part because it does affect the cycle.
Okay, that wasn't perfect at all, but it is a good demonstration of what a decent cycle can look like. I should say that it is possible to try and jump to the first extra and then just miss it. However, that usually happens if you're too slow. Rubber dub is quite a bit different than you'd probably think. You're going to touch this target and then immediately hold right. Or to make it easier, you can jump and hold right just before breaking the target. So if done well, then it should look like this. And then after the cutscene, you ideally want to get a one-frame turnaround, which I did not get. But then after this, you're just going to do the level as normal for a while. So for these last two extras, you actually want to do them in a specific order. It's kind of hard to explain why, but I'll just demonstrate it first. So this is the first extra that you want to get. It's very basic. So that you just grab it and then just die. And then when you get placed back on the track, you want to go forward for a sec and then jump and then grab this extra and then preferably get the one frame turnaround. If not, then that's fine. And then you just die again. So the reason why you want to do that in a specific order is because of where you get placed back on the track. When you get placed here, you have very little speed, which actually makes it easier to grab the second extra. If you had a lot of speed, it would be harder to jump on the very edge of this part of the track. So doing the other one first is just slightly slightly more optimal because otherwise you might accidentally jump really far up this path and that's not what you want at all and then after that you just finish the level like normal first extra in bbbh i mean everybody knows that you just slam this and then you just do slide jumps and then for a while you carry on as normal so this is one of the more annoying extras in the run it's called the pit extra so you basically go down two pits kill the enemies and then an extra spawns however it's very late into the level if you die at any point before that the extra despawns and you have to reload and do all this stuff again. But yeah, here's what it looks like at first. So for the first one, this is how you do it. Just cartwheel into this guy. So that is actually a good example of what you should not do. If you cartwheel the spinner into the other spinner like I did just then, then this happens. He starts hitting you again. He resets his animation. If you do it properly, he will still be in his idle animation after the other guy hit you, which is like a second faster. So I'm actually kind of glad that that happened to me just then so I could show that that's not what you're supposed to do. So how you get back up here optimally, you could just do this. However, if you press A while you're in midair, it's kind of feel-based and weird. But you can sort of cancel your height and you want to do it at the right time so that you land on the ground ASAP. Kind of like that. Although the jump canceling is really hard if you want to stand on this platform. So realistically, the actual fastest thing you can do is just this. Like I said earlier, if you die, then the extra resets. So if you're going to go for Disco Skip, I would highly recommend grabbing this patty if you don't already have max health. So this is the second pit. It's right after Disco. So all you do for my method, you just come down here... And then you just cartwheel these two guys. And then you want to keep cartwheeling while the cutscene is playing. And the reason why is because when the cutscene plays, you can't move, but you can still cartwheel. So if your angle is decent, then it might even push you slightly up like this. So then you'll be closer to the trampoline. What I'm saying might sound weird, but if you're in a remotely favorable angle for the trampoline, then you just want to hold B during the cutscene. And then you might land somewhere around here, for example. When you go on this trampoline, don't do this. It'll store your momentum weirdly, as you can see. So what you actually just want to do is just try and get the jump cancel. So normally when you get here, you walked around here and then walked to the SpongeBob challenge. However, you're actually going to cartwheel over to the SpongeBob challenge because the extra is right next to it. And there is a way that you can get this extra as quickly as possible. It makes sense if you don't want to risk this, but you can do it like this. Because then the extra comes towards you while you're walking to the pad. And I intentionally jump there instead of cartwheeling or else you might go too fast for the SpongeBob pad. You can just cartwheel to the SpongeBob pad and then just wait for the extra to be obtained. But I don't trust myself to do that. So after that, you just do SpongeBob as normal, warp to the first token and then grab that token. And you should have 12 extras at this point in the run. This extra is pretty easy. Just don't hold A throughout this entire thing. Just like kind of tap it when you get towards the ramp. If you hold A on Xbox, you'll most likely just go over it. And also, this is the second extra. You normally go this way on lap two by 
figured I'd just show you it now. And as a reminder, you should have 15 extras at this point in the run. I only have 14 because I'm just warping around everywhere, not collecting some extras. You know what I really love? I really love when I make an all extras tutorial in November of 2021. I start editing it in August of 2022. And while editing it, I realized that I never went back to Rubberdub. And it looks stupid because now the gameplay looks different compared to the other capture that I was using. But anyway, remember when I hit that target in Rebel Dub 1 and then jumped down to an earlier part of the level? Well, the reason why you do that is to set up the extra in Rebel Dub 2. So when you come here the second time, the extra will be here and so will the shortcut. And then the extra will be right here. And then you have two options. You can either die and respawn and then do dumb jump and then just continue on as normal. Or you can do bridge jump, which makes you go this way and you go all the way around the level with the exception of bridge jump. But I highly discourage doing that because it saves like three seconds. However, if you really want to do it, it will be shown later in the video. For the first extra on rock slide, it's a little difficult to explain, but you're going to want to turn right like immediately if you want to do it quickly. So as soon as you land, just hold a hard right, let yourself fall for a sec, and then just do two extended jumps. That went by kind of quickly, but basically just don't let yourself slide for too long before beginning to do the double jumps. And remember, hold A to extend your jumps and separate them properly. As for the second extra, instead of going down the normal path, you go to the right. Come along by here, and then after a second or so, you want to jump here, and then let yourself go to about the red manly, so there's just no chance that the game updates your position in a weird way. And then you get the second extra pretty easily. For the final extra, you go to the left here. And then you don't want to space your jumps, like, too perfectly, and you don't want to go off the edge too perfectly either, or else you might have too much speed here. It's just another one of those double jumps, and then, like, the one frame turnaround. So for the first extra in Now There Were Men, I don't blame you if you want to come back here later and use guitar on uh, the TNT. But I'm going to show you the most RTA viable way of doing this in mid-game. So you upgrade Bull and then you come behind here. And then you want to hold directly forward and then find the right angle. So for example, this should be good. And then you want to charge a full Bull shot. So just hold B throughout the entire thing. So if you've done it correctly, then it should look like this. And then you just get the extra. Sometimes you'll break the boxes and it won't give you the extra. That is because it took too long. And that is because your angle is not correct. So again, maybe something like this. It's slightly feel-based, but I don't personally feel like it's that difficult. This next extra is going to be a little difficult to explain because it has to do with the game updating your position and stuff. You can just walk around, basically just do it casually, and that loses like four seconds. But you're pretty much just going to copy what I do. So you come by here, you go around like that. Like you want to do a full like wide turn. And then you do a full double jump spin. And then you jump to here. Sometimes it'll throw you kind of upright a little bit. And that will reduce some of the distance you get. But if done properly, you should still be able to make it over here. Sometimes for some reason, it'll just knock you back to the platform over here. Or it'll just instantly drown you. But if you do a full Y turn and then do a full double jump spin, it seems to happen not that often. And then all you do is just grab the extra and walk along here. And then you just do cutscene skip like normal. Alright, so this is just another one of those ones where I'm just gonna have to show you it. So of course, get the cartwheel buffer there if you can. And I'm just gonna show you the cycle I normally get. I don't really do this that often though, so it's probably just a better way of doing this. So ideally there, you either go in between the spikes, like I tried to do, or I guess that happens. You basically, you saw that block that I was just standing on, you want to get there before the block on top of it like it spikes hit you and then you you want to some like you want to cancel your jumps if you can here again that's a bit feel based you don't really have a great visual cue for that This cycle is actually a little too fast. <laughs> okay, well, you're probably not gonna be on that cycle anyway. And 
And then you grab this. And then you can, like, cartwheel jump like this. However, that is a little risky. You might want to wait until the block rotates and gives you more height. And at the end, you can just cartwheel down here. Okay, so for this, I am going to show Toast Early first, but if you don't get it, I'm just gonna have to show you how to do a guitar later. But I would highly recommend trying this, at least, because it saves, like, a minute or two. I should say that the Invisible Crate strat that we will be doing is actually slightly harder on PAL, because for some reason, it just gives you less height. Anyway, ideally, you have Upgraded Throw here, because you just use it against this piece of Toast immediately. You can just walk up to it like this, and then just press are, but it's faster to already just have it upgraded and then just do this. But it's not the end of the world. That only loses like a couple seconds. By the way, if you die here just like the BBBH Extra, then the Extra resets. However, unlike the BBBH Extra, if you die after the Extra has already spawned, then that's fine. It'll stay there. So I highly recommend killing the Spitter here, and this is the best way of doing it. Usually when you do this, the spitter will fall into the TNT and you get a huge combo. And now as for this itself, this is going to be really hard to explain. So I'm going to do a trick known as Invisible Crate. There are multiple different setups for this, but I'm just going to show you my own. What you will essentially be doing is throwing the crate at the wall. And for some reason, part of its collision stays intact. So let me show you what happens when I just do unupgraded throw. So I did that, and now when I stand on it, now it has a weird sliding property, as you can see. And this is taken to an extreme when you actually use Upgraded Throw. However, by Upgraded Throw, I don't mean go up against the wall and use Upgraded Throw like this. You want to be a decent distance away, but you can't be too far away. If you're too close, the collision will not remain intact. And if you're too far away, the collision won't remain intact. So not only is it a thing of positioning and your angle, but also how long you hold throw for. So I'm going to show you an example of what my setup would normally look like so i'm around this far away and then i hold r but i hold off as sort of like the minimum and then i have this sort of camera angle and then it'll look like this so as you saw it landed by here and if i try and walk into it like you'll see the collision is here and when i jump on it i get a weird height boost believe it or not i'm actually gonna use microsoft paint to show you this because this is the level of professionalism that we're at and also it's literally just the easiest way to show you how to do it so the collision will kind of be like this so you'll jump by here and then you'll want to start cartwheeling like as soon as you jump on the invisible crate. And then you want to cartwheel for a very brief amount of time and you jump as it starts pushing you upwards. So you'll cartwheel and almost immediately after you'll jump. It is a bit feel based, but again, you'll just jump here, like cartwheel and then you jump like here and then you'll get the huge height boost. So you'll see exactly what I mean now. So watch this. What I showed you in Microsoft Paint of all things is exactly what you actually want to do. So you cartwheel for a very, very brief amount of time, and then almost immediately after you want to jump. Like that. I did destroy a floating box earlier. If that's annoying you, you can try and, like, slam it in midair like this. It's possible that the crate will land here or here. But for me, it's easiest if it lands around this sort of area. It's fine if it lands by here, but then the box might get in the way and you need better height then. And also around here is fine, but I don't know. I feel like the way that I do it is, in my opinion, the easiest way. And also, you kind of want to guess what the direction it's taking you in is because if i face it in the opposite direction like you can see it's pushing me like the opposite direction because i'm not supposed to be facing this way so when you throw the crate and it lands and you can see the explosion you have to imagine what the collision looks like and because it landed here it is going to be facing this direction so again cartwheel jump and then when you land here so you can either land like here on top of here on top of the toaster just don't fall into the toaster, because then you'll probably softlock. If that's too hard, then I understand, like, it does discourage people from running this. But I would say, you know, give it a good go. After a while, you do genuinely get pretty consistent at it. Just remember, like, you don't want to be too close, you don't want to be too far away, you want to have, like, a good angle. I do, like, a minimum throw. There are other people's setups you can look at. Um, if you can't do this, I'd recommend looking at Cardin's setup, which you can find in his most recent All Extras run. 
one, but hopefully you're getting it with some consistency. There is a second crate here if you mess it up with the first one, and if you're very, very adamant, you can cartwheel all the way back, and you can use the safe that was here, or even the one over there. Of course, we use that on the spitter, but if you really, really want as many chances as possible, then there you go. But if you waste all the crates, then you're just gonna have to reload the level. So here it is one last time. And then you can just cartwheel the toast like that. And then finally, you drop onto the token like this. For most beginner and intermediate players, you just kind of drown over here. But of course, you can't do that here. So what you're going to have to do is either cartwheel double jump to the ice cube, or alternatively, you can actually do this strat that's faster, but slightly harder in my opinion. So you're going to use this trampoline to get back there quicker than using the ice cube. And then you have to cartwheel in the position where the fog is going to spawn. And you can cancel your jump in mid-air to make it even faster. So this is what it should look like if you do it optimally. So for this, you want to wait until you bounce as high as possible. So, and then you hold R, just like that. And then you can just hold forward if you're feeling risky and you can even cartwheel in the middle of the cutscene. And then you want to use the trampoline to take you really far forwards, like all the way back to here. And then you can either do Patrick 2 Melon or Patrick 1 Melon. The spinner's placement is RNG and roughly half the time they are in the way for me. And if they are in the way for you, then you can just throw this at them. And then finally, when you drown, you'll spawn back by here and then you just grab this extra and then you just use the fruit on the TV like normal. So once again, this is just monkey see monkey do. I hate extras like this, but this is pretty much the last one. But yeah, this is going to be assuming that you have Ice Physics Glitch. Just like walking on ice cream. Oh, goody, another one. So for the last extra in this level, all you do is just cartwheel here, and then just do a double jump. Although, of course, this is going to mess with the move cycle a little bit. You'll just have to practice with that and just see what kind of cycles you can get. And also, as your second reminder, you should have 26 extras at this point if you're doing the standard route. So in my opinion, uh, this token is kind of easier when you grab the extra. So after this, you just cartwheel, double jump. And then that does change the cycle here, but it's, like, pretty easy to practice that. And then just the rest is the same. Alright, so for Sunday Driving, you already know what one of the extras is. It's just, like, the tunnel shortcut that you take on lap 2. There is an extra towards the end of lap 1. However, I don't recommend getting it there because you want to be as far away from Goob as possible before doing Fast Goob to increase your chances of getting away from him. So I would actually recommend doing it on the second or third lap like this. I wouldn't really say it's worth, like, nitroing afterwards. But yeah, after that, we're gonna go to the final extra. In Hundo, you can just do this during the ring challenge, but here we need to take quite the detour. You can't do this unless you do Fast Goob, by the way. You need to do Fast Goob. Either that, or you're just gonna have to go all the way to, uh, Sunday ring. And then you might as well just not even play the category. But you get that, and you just continue on this path. There is technically another strat you can do, and I will show it because it is faster, but if you're not good enough to do fast cube, then you're not going to be good enough to do that strat in the first place. Okay, for Gask, if you are used to the old uh, faster route, then this won't be very dissimilar for you. So you can do what I just did just then. You can, like, go a bit more left if you want to be super safe, but that's just how you do the first part. And then, as a reminder, you don't jump to the green thing and die. You just keep going, but you do want to have one health. So this second extra is a little difficult. It has some pretty big time loss if you miss it. It's not the end of the world, but it can potentially kill a good run. You just want to hold left, like, ASAP, like, right now. 
You can hold left pretty early because the target has quite a big hitbox. You can probably do it earlier than you think. I would highly recommend just giving it a shot. If you miss it, just carry on like I am and then jump back to the blue wire to get another shot at it. Because then you just get a much straighter path to it like this. This final extra is really easy. You, you just jump to it. Although you need to keep in mind that, uh, so normally you jump over like a cutscene trigger and you have to do the exact same thing here. It doesn't disappear after the first time. You gotta jump just like that. I should say that there is a faster way of doing it where you like go forward a little bit to set the checkpoint, then do a couple one frame jumps backwards, and then get like a really stupidly specific angle and then grab the extra like that. However, it's like the worst strat in existence. If you do it though, it saves like 20, 25 seconds. Okay, 2022 Pibble Foundation here again because 2021 Pibble Foundation doesn't know how to stop making mistakes. Basically, after Dennis 2, you don't warp back to Gask. You warp the Planktopolis. You don't do Gesk 2 in this category. And then, Plank is identical in all extras to how it is in No Pole Storage for a while. The difference is that when you collect the Bounce Token, which is the one where you go out of bounds and then you start ceiling swimming, after collecting it, you don't warp back to the beginning, you warp to Bounce. The reason why we don't warp back to the beginning is because at this point we have 39 tokens. So this is where the pretty significant change happens compared to No Pole Storage. You just get damage boosted here. And then you want to walk over here and you'll see the button just pop into existence. The button is not normally there until you've walked around this area. And then when that's happened, you just drown yourself. And then you walk to it and then you just press B like that and then you destroy like that. And the reason why you have to do that is because, again, you don't have a guitar. Because in all extras, you actually do the Spongebob challenge instead of just doing another guest token. So I'm actually going to show you how to do Plank Topless Spongebob because in the no post storage tutorial, I didn't teach it because you just don't do it there. So I'm going to show you how to do it fast and then I'm going to show you the safe way of doing it. So you want to kind of like aim for more of the right side of that just then. And then you want to build up a bit of speed, like just after passing this... Ideally, you build a bit of speed. And then red, yellow, blue is the pattern here. So yellow and then blue. And then you can grab this. And then you can keep holding forward like immediately after. And then if you're fast enough, you can still make that cycle. Normally, collecting the extra loses like two seconds. But you can... Just get away with getting on the same cycle if you're fast enough. So now I'm just going to show you a safer way of doing this. So as you can see, you're supposed to go on the fan with the manly. And now the issue is I have to wait for the corkscrew cycle. That's why it loses time in the first place. And then you don't really have to build speed here if you don't want to. Again, I'm just going to show like a pretty safe way. I mean, you want to build a bit, but I did it quite late just then. And again, red, yellow, blue. So yellow, blue. And then if you want to be safe here, that's completely fine. You might not want to risk that. You might want to just go in between and wait for the steam. You can uh, make it to the other side even when the steam is blowing. But that's kind of hard. You want to hold, like, a really hard, like, up left if you're going to do that. And then if you want, if you want to do this safely, then you can just grab the extra and back up like that. Also, what cycle the steam is on with this can vary. So just then I had to hang at the back. But sometimes you might be on a cycle when no steam blows at all. But still, you probably want to hang at the back of the block just in case. And then for this, you actually want to attempt to one frame or two frame this token. And I actually did get it because that is your 40th token. And then that's when you uh, go back to the beginning. Once you load here, you're going to talk to Mindy and get guitar. And then right after, you're going to do another extra. I'm going to show you the way that I do it because it's the fastest way. But I also just, I feel like it's not immediately as consistent as some other methods of doing it. However, I feel like after just a bit of practice, like you will get a more consistent and as faster. So what I do, I just drop down and bowl and then. I just and then I walk up like this and then I do a minimum shot ball so I just tap B and then sort of start holding in this direction so it'll look like this 
It can be a bit tricky, but then you walk up to this, and then you grab the extra in the middle of the cutscene, and then it teleports you back here. Alternatively, you can step on top of the crate that I just destroyed and sort of angle yourself and then just ball. You can stand behind this and do a ball, or here. Th there's a lot of ways that you can do it, but I do genuinely believe that the way that I do it is the best way of doing it. After you're done with uh, getting guitar and grabbing the extra, you actually want to warp back to the second token and go to area two and do the move damage boost all as normal, except this time you don't go to playing topless. Uh, Sponge Ball. It, it, it might seem really slow, but I promise you it's a, it saves like 40 seconds. It's an absurd time save. So if you're doing the standard route, this is like the only time you're going to use this tech, but we're going to do tech called uh, Guitar Glide. So when you see the paddle things like go out of frame, you want to press R like just as you're about to wall jump. It's not precise at all. You'll see what I mean. And then you want to land here. And then you want to wait for this to come back. And then you just continue on as normal. But I will go into a bit more detail. Again, just wait until they go off screen. And then you press R. And then you're in like this weird guitar glide state. And you can see SpongeBob is slowly descending. You can move around a little bit. But then if you spin, then you can actually guide the direction that SpongeBob is going in. And also the frame window for this is pretty big, by the way. So you don't have to guitar glide like immediately after uh, these those paddle things exit the screen. But yeah, you'll grab the extra here. And then here's what happens if you spin while you're about to touch the ground. Now you can see the SpongeBob's in a really weird state and he's being pushed in the right direction. That is because your timing with the spinning was bad. You can escape this just by pressing A, but I should show you how to actually time it properly to avoid that in the first place. So when you're landing, just let go of spin for the last like couple seconds. Also one final thing actually, ideally you press R and x at the same time because then you just get the immediate spin so you can immediately start again this has a lot of leniency okay so now you should have uh 36 extras with the normal route and of course mindy will say you don't have enough tokens and she will bring up the rub of the menu we will be doing no cheese ball storage because we couldn't do ggc you can set it up in like depression or even other levels but that's really risky you probably should just do no cheese or depression combat which is a faster load but we don't fully know the consistency of it so if you want to be super safe i would say just do no cheese but before we can even do that we just need to do some backtracking stuff so you're gonna go from rubber dub to now that we're men you can do these extras in whatever order you want but i'm gonna do this one first just because it's harder and it's just a movement thing there is like a one frame time save at the end that i'll show you but doing this is faster than going through the beginning of the level all over again uh, to this extra, so you actually want to do it backwards, and it looks pretty cool. Of course, some of the platforming can be a little tricky, but you can just be safe of it if you really want to. You go through the box, and then what you're going to do, you're going to stand, like, here, and then you'll go into guitar this, because that is the only way to destroy it, and the extra will spawn. And there is a roughly three-second time save that you can do here now. So when you die, there is a one-frame window to open the pause menu before respawning. So if you just do it normally, then you just double jump spin to it. I wouldn't recommend not spinning. I would recommend just spinning there, even though it's a little slow. And then you just respawn, and then you press start. However, with the one-frame, you know, no, you can time it you can just mash it but it's like the frame th there's a certain frame after the hand leaves the screen where you can press start and open the menu so you can skip him placing spongebob back in bounds so there you go that's what it should look like uh, again you can time it but it's a bit of a weird visual cue so i would probably just spam star if you want but then again you can just do them in whichever order you want but i would do the second and this is just completely casual there's no reason for you to want to do this before scda floating block but i'm just saying now just don't because then you'll kill ice physics glitch so you just walk up to it like this, and then there you go. So then you do ball storage, and again, either no cheese or depression combat, then warp to SCDA Sponge Bowl, and then warp to here. This is the last level where you need to worry about extras, and so for this one, you just uh, drive into the statue, and it'll create a domino effect. You have a lot of leeway for this. 
just obviously don't forget it because I have done that in runs before. And then Nitro, like as soon as it falls, so you immediately gain all of your speed back. And of course, you know, the second extra is just in the tunnel path that you just normally take anyway. And then here's the third extra. So you come along here and then you just Nitro across. And then finally, the last one is behind here. So back up a bit. This extra has a really weird hitbox. So you might not actually be in the right direction to grab it, even if it looks like you're practically touching it. But yeah, as soon as you know that you've gotten it, then you just want to immediately Nitro again, just like with the first extra. And then just like that, you've collected all the extras, and now I'm going to go over some alternative strats that you can do. So this one is pretty hard, and I would absolutely not recommend it, but I'm just going to show it anyway, just so I'm you know, just showing all the ways to get extras, really. So instead of carrying on with Depression, like in Depression 1 and grabbing the extra like that, you just leave leave it and then grab it in backtracking and you can actually sell bull storage here which is why it would save so much time individually it saves like three seconds but it's really hard to actually obtain that time save so what you do you just warp the guitar and then cartwheel here and then go into the portal head and then you double you want to do you want to space your jumps out really well on hold a you want to double jump and then you will jump across here and then you'll land here and then you're going to do a guitar glide and then you're going to glide all the way over to, uh, over there. So if you do it properly, then this is what it'll look like. It is pretty difficult to do properly. But then if you do it right, it'll look like that. And now this part is hard. This will definitely take practice. You want to bowl as you descend, and you, you're just going to have to figure out the angle yourself, honestly. So as you can see, I missed a box. Ideally, you wouldn't miss the box this, and I'm saving, like, nothing from this. If you take too long to get the boxes, then the extra will not appear, and then you just wasted your time and a run. Hopefully, that didn't happen, and uh, you can make any time back that you lost by just bowling here. And then you set up bowl storage just like that. However, there is a very serious issue with doing bowl storage here. You absolutely can do it here, but first of all, you need to do the Nado Mem backtracking first, which is fine. But second, some weird effect happens with this. Mindy skip from the testing that we've done seems to always work with 100% accuracy if you do it here. But there seems to be roughly a maybe 40% chance for the game to crash when trying to load into Neptune. I have only tested this on NTSC Original X. Xbox, so it is possible that maybe it's just my disc, or maybe it's just my Xbox, or maybe it's just this region, I don't know. But yeah, it is very risky. It, you know, if you do all of this perfectly, then you're saving like, what, 11, 12 seconds? Like, that's really nice. But this is why I personally would not recommend it. You can still do the guitar glide strat and just not set up ball storage here. Again, you can just do in depression combat, but then it's really hard to actually save time with this. So I feel like it's only worth it if you're gonna do ball storage here. And then if you do ball storage here, your game might crash but still if you want all the time you can get that's how you do it okay if you decided that you wanted to do bridge jump then what you do after getting the rubber dub extra is just continue the level as normal and then you know watch all the cutscenes from breaking the targets and stuff like that and then you do a big skip at the bridge so it's gonna be a bit of monkey see monkey do so i'll just show it right now pay attention to where i'm jumping You do have a surprising amount of leniency, but I still wouldn't recommend it because of how little it saves. So as you saw, I went through a small flower, and it was like the flower that was furthest away. And then you want to hang off the edge for a while, and then like turn left a little after that. And then you want to do basically the same thing with the bridge. Uh, you just hold left, and then you want to wait a little bit, and then you do a double jump. And then to get maximum time save, you would get a one frame turn around when you land. This path loses a ton of time if you don't do bridge jump. You have to do it for time save. But there's a lot that can go wrong. First of all, if you die, you get put back in a really terrible spot. Like, this just doesn't give you enough speed to do it, really. Or, like, if you can do it, you can barely do it. But as you can see now, I just have, like, no speed. So to get a second try in a run, you're gonna want to try and, like double jump back and then build up as much speed as possible which you can do i think but it's still very hard you can do like one frame jumps backwards to try and get even more distance to build speed like this but at that point i feel like you're just 
adding a ton of difficulty to the strat. One benefit of this is that you also do the strat in all tokens of 100%, so that makes it a little easier for you to transition to those categories in future. But yeah, again, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so if you hate yourself, then one thing that you can do is grab this extra by doing a spawner bash boost as opposed to doing it casually and backtracking. The setup for this can vary a bit, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna, like walk around like this you're gonna jump around and then ledge grab and then ideally you'll get an angle that's kind of like this you know some people like it a little more here or a little more here but i kind of like it like this and then you're gonna like just set your position you're gonna want to spin while doing it so spongebob doesn't accidentally change his angle and then i like to be sort of at the edge roughly of this flower and then you can use different camera angles for this but then it can make it harder to actually jump to the extra so honestly i just have it like this but you can have it like this or this or even just this if you want so what you're gonna do you're gonna bowl this and then you're going to bash and then that's going to give you momentum to then bash again and then spin and then double jump and then barely touch the extra one thing that you need to learn immediately is that i 100 promise you that you need to bash later than you think you do i'm talking maybe even like a second later than you think the explosion is the hitbox like you can literally see the hitbox expanding so let me show you a good example of what i mean you can see I don't immediately take damage. It's because the outside of the explosion does not actually damage you. It's the inside part. And it just expands. So that's why you have to bash later than you think you do. So now you just do a minimum charge ball. So you just tap it. And I bash quite late, as you could probably hear from the audio. So as soon as you take damage, like immediately as you take damage, you want to hold forward. And you really need to have amazing jump spacing here. And this can be kind of a bitch to practice. I'd recommend having a practice file where you haven't collected the extra and then you just keep reloading to it. But I'll just show it off again. So this is sort of roughly my ideal angle. Tap B. And just like that. Again, you can do different angles. I feel like my angle is definitely not for everyone. So you can do it like this if you want. The only issue is as you're turning around, you're going to lose a tiny bit of your distance, especially if you are not turning him, like, optimally. And that can overall make the trick harder, potentially. But as long as you turn at, like, the right time and just do it optimally, then you'll hardly lose any distance from that. This saves, like, 10 seconds with the setup. You can just, like, bash this guy and then just stand here and wing it. And that does save a f an extra few seconds, but I promise you that's not worth it. So I'm gonna tell you how to do it one last time, but just taking it slowly. You are going to ledge grab, and then you're going to find the right angle for you. And then you're going to inch your way forward and just kind of spin while doing it. And then this should be good. Tap B, bash it, and then you think you need to. And then immediately hold forward as soon as you take damage, and then uh, bash again, and then double jump spin to the extra. In case you're wondering, you can't really do a ball extended jump here. You can't, like, cartwheel double jump here as Patrick. You can do a VMS here, but it's, like, really slow. So pretty much the only options you have are just doing it the way I showed you, or just doing it as Patrick and backtracking. The method that I showed you is for now though, men one. So here's me doing it one last time. And then after you get it, you're gonna spawn by here. You can walk, like, while it's black, but I would kind of not recommend that. But if you are, then you can hold, like, a direct right. That's a bit risky, but that's what I kind of do. I just hold, like, pretty much directly right. And then when I can see again, I just sort of turn the camera. So this extra for Sunday, like, the alternative way of doing it is kind of stupid. It's technically not luck, but it's, like 
pretty much luck because it's based on like where you are in it. He has like a sphere. Like th the last time you enter the sphere, like how close you are to him determines his speed. It's really stupid. And there's no true way of doing that consistently right now. So it's virtually luck. However, I have found a way to make this part more consistent. Basically, you want to get really far ahead of him on lap one and make sure that he just does not catch back up to you because that is the only way that you can do this extra. Otherwise, you have to do the method that I showed earlier and that loses like nine seconds. So so on lap one, I turn the corner and then I just like immediately nitro. And then if you, if pretty much if you got lucky, then Goob won't catch back up to you. And th like here, this is where like movement and good nitro management like actually matters a lot. Because if you play bad, then he's just going to catch back up to you. You really like do need to play decently. This part is a little tricky and you might need to practice it a bit. Um, If you do see Goob, you can technically still go for this, but it's really hard. So you would grab the extra like this. It's in the air. Like I already collected it. And then you want to immediately nitro again. The spiral here is weird. And sometimes Goob will not be far away from you at all. But the game will think that you are. And it'll fail you basically. Because like just how it works is that it's just it's based on weird trigger stuff. And but there it's like kind of unfair and dumb. So if you see Goob like just as you're about to attempt that. That's not the end of the world. But you probably should not go for it. But if you are going to, then yeah, you want two nitros this. You can immediately nitro again. And if you do that, then you save nine seconds. It actually saves more like 13 seconds if you do Sunday Jump. Because you can't do Sunday Jump unless you get the extra in the way that I just showed you. However, that strat sucks, especially on NTSC Xbox, because, you know, it's partially height dependent. And only a couple runners go for it. But yeah, that is technically the maximum time save of that strat. Oh yeah, one last thing I should mention is that you should probably really not do this if you're not playing on original Xbox. The reason why is because uh, 360 has slower driving, as you should probably already know by now. So that's just going to make it even harder. I, I mean, you can if you really want to because you'll get a higher bounce for the extra but i really really would not recommend it so if you don't want to do toast early that's fine so you'll have to go to scda at some point and warp to the guitar challenge you probably do not want to do this uh like while you're chaining ball storage because otherwise it might potentially make mindy skip just not work so you have to go from like rubber dub to like now the men to scda and then back to like depression but anyway the triggers are like really annoying even just doing this casually so that's another reason why i don't recommend it but you can use an upgraded guitar here and then just home in on this and then you're going to start the guitar challenge so i'm going to show you the first toast that you hit in the guitar challenge you basically just do this but again the trigger is so small but that one is easier than the second one okay so as for the final piece of toast you can't even just like immediately hit it when you get into this area because again like the trigger you're going to get it in a sec and you want to get it like this hopefully if you just aim for like the center the extra will just spawn and then you just walk over to it and then that's the entire thing if the cutscene doesn't play then you just didn't go through one of the triggers again it is really stupid um it is most likely the final piece of toast though that like where that was the issue it's it's a lot easier to hit the other one so this is the final thing that i'm gonna show uh this is just known as plank dbv but a lot goes into it and i don't really recommend it, it i'm just again i'm just showing it off for the sake of showing it off so you're gonna need to first know how to do y plus r jump so on 360, it's a bit different because you just want to do Y plus R like right after I'm pausing, but it's not quite as easy. Um, if you see that happen, it's possible that your bash input has gotten eaten. So press Y. So my input wasn't eaten just then, but your input could have been eaten. And then that would screw you over when trying to do the jumps again. But yeah, on original Xbox, you just do select, select, and then you just get the jump. It's it's a lot easier on this version. But you can actually do it on every single version of the game. So now what you want to do is stand around here. You need kind of a weird angle for this to work. Just try and figure out a consistent angle for you. And then you're going to do the Y plus R jump. And you'll notice that you get a really big height boost for some reason. For some reason... If you just approach walls at a weird angle, then you can sometimes get huge height boosts like that. Next, you want to have SpongeBob facing straight like this. Don't have him facing this way or that way. Like you want to, you want him to actually like face straight. And then what I do, I pr actually press up on the D-pad because in my opinion, it makes it easier while pressing start. So I'm going to get close to the edge and then I'm going to press start and D-pad up at the same time. 
And I'm gonna keep inching. And then as you can see, I got a big speed boost there. So now you want to press X to go into the options menu, then press A to go into the save game, and then hold B at this point. So right now you're holding B, and then you want to cancel the rest of the menu by pressing select. So you press select again, and then you're going to press select one more time. So I'm going to say this now, you're going to do a ball boost, but you don't want to hold B for like a long time. You just want to hold it for a very short amount of time. You don't want to just tap it, but you want to just hold it for a very short amount of time and then immediately after press y so this is what it looks like and then you just press y and then you probably want to like jump spin towards the end the annoying thing about this is that you can't really properly practice it if you touch the final platform there like at all it'll set your checkpoint there like i even touched the trampoline so now i can't really practice it again if you're struggling just listen back to what i said um if you pop out and just don't get any speed then your angle was probably off and thus you just want to do like the y plus r jump and try it again or just just give up up on it i'm not sure how much it saves exactly but i probably save somewhere around like 8 to 12 seconds i wouldn't really recommend it to most people i feel like it's more of a high level trick because even while buffering it like it's still like just really stupid but again you'll just be doing d-pad and star and then you'll do x a and then you hold b and then select select and then you'll just only hold b for a bit and then pretty much immediately after you want to press y and then you'll probably have too much speed so then you will have to jump and spin and then you'll barely land on the trampoline. So yeah, that is the end of my all extras tutorial because the only thing I didn't show was that one guest strat. I'm just, yeah, that is horrible. Never do that. In case you're wondering why this wasn't like a full tutorial showing like all the strats, most of the strats in this category are the same as no pull storage. And it's just, it's kind of like, what's the point, you know, especially when people never run this category first. And if they really needed to, I, I know this would make it a bit confusing, but they could even just learn the no pull storage route and then learn the extras with this video separately. And they wouldn't even have that much issue doing that. It would just be a little confusing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I can try helping helping you in any way in the comments section. Alternatively, you can join the SpongeBob SquarePants movie Discord server, and there's a help channel. Some of my setups, people I'm just not going to do, they're going to do different setups, and that might help you. Or perhaps they explain something differently, and this that's the only way that you can understand it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was helpful.